Thank you so much for being with us today. I just have a few questions to ask you about your life as an activist. First of all, what events or beliefs in your youth led you to become an activist? I would say that because I was raised in an intergenerational household and my grandmother, uh, my grandparents were a very big part of raising me. Um, and I think I understood from an early age how important all of the people who care for you in your lives are. Um, that that really informed who I am and uh, my values. And more recently, I've been reflecting on the fact that my grandparents always taught me to honor my elders. And, uh, and I've been thinking a lot about that, about how my work on aging and caregiving is probably rooted in that. Um, I also have uh, the great fortune of having many strong women in my life. And um, the idea that women who do so much to power our society and our economy um, and um, keep our communities together and our families whole are still valued less and their work is valued less. And a lot of the work that's so essential, like caregiving work, is not valued in our society. And so I think that learning that as I grew older um, was part of the passion, part of what inspired me to do what I do today. I think so often today we don't get the benefit of being in an intergenerational situation. I just listened actually to your TED talk that you did at Middlebury where you talked about your grandmother and I thought that was really wonderful. Thank you. She just passed away recently. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It sounded yeah. like she was quite the spirit. She really was. And uh, I hope I'm doing her a memory justice in this work. What continues to motivate you or give you courage or guide you? Well, you know, we live in such difficult times. There's so much change happening all around us. And one of the most important ground, grounding forces in my life is the resilience that comes from being in an organization and in a community of women who, um, who continue through challenge after challenge to um, do everything in their power, to care for their families, care for themselves, do the work that they do, and to be involved in our organization and in our advocacy. So I just feel so inspired every day to get up and to serve the workforce that I serve and to be in this community and a part of forward motion in our country through this time of a lot of change and and turmoil. Well, one of the things that's inspiring me right now is that the, the pandemic has really revealed just how many workers that we've taken for granted that are invisible in our economy, how essential they are, right? It's suddenly we're recognizing that delivery workers and farm workers and grocery workers and care workers, all these workers that we've taken for granted and we haven't even really seen that they're actually essential to our safety and our well being. And my hope is that we'll be able to really honor and protect them in a whole new way coming out of this crisis. And that gives me a lot of hope and energy going forward. The reckoning that we're having about how race and racism has shaped this country in every aspect of our lives, um, and especially the anti black racism that is at the root of our policing system, our labor laws, and so much else that we have to start undoing um, in every corner of our society. That has also been re re revealed in a way that I think will help us begin to undo it over time. Amen. What advice do you have for young activists today? Well, I think that we're living in a time where everything is changing. And I think there are times in history when History moves a little faster and more change is possible, bigger change is possible. And so on one level, it's a big responsibility that we have to bring in the kind of change that will help this country not just survive um, this period, but to really thrive into the future. And that means that we all have to be engaged. Democracy is not a spectator sport and our future is not a spectator sport. We have to get in there and really shape it. And so I would say that you don't have to do everything, 
um, but find your lane, find something that you're passionate about and um, know that you can always, always be a part of the solution, that you have agency and your actions and your choices really matter and to just take it one step at a time and know that, um, that in this time in history that your actions matter more than ever before. Um, so when you do decide to take action, to support an issue that you feel passionate about or to vote or to organize or to join a campaign that your imprint on society is, is more significant than ever before. Sometimes I think people feel a little overwhelmed, like where to start. What thoughts do you have about starting local? I think starting local and starting where your passions are. You know, really listening to your own intuition and your interests, because um, that authentic love and care for an issue or um, some aspect of change is will continue to fuel you over time. And, um, and you don't have to do everything. That's the thing is you don't have to, there's no one role that you're supposed to fill. Um, and I think it's good to take it as a process and learn as you go and try some things and um, find a home, an organization that you can um, really grow with and that can support you in your activism and in your leadership and, um, and be patient with yourself and with that organization. Thank you so much. That's wonderful words of advice for young people. I really appreciate your talking with me today. Thank you so much.